today. So I might just give an introduction to just some of the staff that we have here today. So uh, my name is Katie O'Rourke, I'm Aintus Head of Communications. Uh, we have my colleague Derba Lawless, who is Head of Advocacy, um, Emma O'Kane, who's our Social Media Officer, Suzanne Kerr, who's our Admin Assistant. We have John Ryan, who is the Office Manager, and we have Eve Cobain, who is our research officer. So you're all really welcome today and we're looking forward to a really, I guess, inter interactive session around the Adult Learners Festival. So we are two and a half weeks away, is that right? Um, to running our first ever virtual online festival. So today is one part uh, of two webinars that we'll be running around the festival. So we hope this provides an opportunity for you to find out more information about what Aintus is doing this year. Um, and then also we anticipate there'll be lots of questions around the festival. We've been talking to members on the phone uh, over the last couple of weeks. Because it's the first virtual uh, festival, it looks a little bit different. Um, we're obviously in very high level uh, restrictions. So really we're hoping that during the week of the festival, we'll be able to, to I guess, provide a bit of hope to the adult learning sector and also really acknowledge and celebrate the fantastic work that's been happening, um, you know, during this COVID-19 this COVID pandemic. So we'll go through some of the activities that AINTIS is doing and then also how we're planning to support members uh, to run events. And then just to be aware that next week we're focusing on very much how to run an online event. So if there's content for next week or questions and ideas that you would like us to cover next week, we're really happy to be flexible about that. Um, just a quick update in terms of AINTIS. Uh, I know my, my colleague Eve is looking after the MAEDF, so the Mitigating Against Educational Disadvantage Fund survey. So if anybody hasn't filled that out and has been successful in applying for the fund or not, please do share your experience through that survey. Eve might pop a link up at some point in the chat box just so members can do that. Um, but I guess from an Aintus perspective, we're very much focused on the festival now. That's kind of our key um, activity. And we're focused on a, a really kind of exciting program of events during that week. So please do feel free to stop and ask me questions during my presentation. Um, my colleague Emma is also, who's social media officer, is going to give an input. And then we'll have loads of time for a breakout session to ask questions, uh, get some feedback from members. Um, and that's really your opportunity to, to find out more about um, what we're doing. So if you bear with me for two seconds, I will uh, start my presentation and just give you a quick overview um, of the Adult Learners Festival and I guess how it looks a little bit different this year. Um, so, like I mentioned, we're, we'll do a quick overview of the festival, some of the key activities that Aintus is doing to support members. Uh, Emma will look at the social media campaign and the launch of the festival, what we'll be doing around that. So, I guess we're conscious as well that members might not necessarily have the resources to run online events or the capacity to do that. So, there's lots of ways that you can take part in the festival, even if it isn't running an event. In the breakout session, we'll look at um, you know, how, how you'd like to take part in this year's festival, whether you're planning on running an event, how we can support you, and then a Q&A session as well. So there might be questions that not all colleagues can answer within those breakout groups, and we'll bring that back into the main session, and we can chat about that if there's anything that, um, that we can't answer within those breakout groups, because I've been asked questions this week uh, that I don't necessarily know the answer to, because it's all very different in terms of running a virtual festival. So it's a brilliant opportunity for us as well to get feedback from, from members um, because it will help us shape those activities as well. So I guess just looking at the kind of the strategic uh, plan goals within AINTIS, um, and I think this is really useful in, ter in terms of thinking about some of the key areas that we're focused on. And the festival allows us really to look at all three of these strategic plan goals in terms of our communications work. And really the festival for us is a national campaign that we can really highlight the value and the benefits of adult learning and, and kind of create awareness. And it does have that kind of advocacy focus as well in terms of making a call for action. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that around our policy event that we're running as part of the festival. So, you know, we've learned our voice, which is going to be a key part um, of all of the communications throughout the festival. Community education, which is, you know, we're so passionate about and they're the CEN are such a, a fantastic community as well. Um, and I think that's really a key, a key area that we're looking at. And then lifelong learning for sustainability, which is 
a new area for us in terms of what we're focused on. But there is a theme within the festival uh, and the Star Awards, uh, sustainable development through education. And that again, uh, provides us with an opportunity to have that focus um, in terms of some of the key activities throughout the festival. So the dates for the festival are the 1st to the 5th of March. So like I mentioned, I think it's two and a half weeks to go. Um, and I guess it does look very different in terms of being in this level of restrictions. The festival normally offers us a, an opportunity for groups to throw open their doors and invite people in for open days, events and workshops. So we obviously can't do that. And I think it's really important to remember that, um, you know, when we're communicating and I've had some questions this week about groups saying, can they do something outdoors? And really what we would strongly encourage groups is that we are following all of the guidelines um, as is absolutely necessary. So all of our events will be online and we'll be following all of those restrictions that are in place because obviously that's really important and health and safety is you know the number one priority in terms of, of running this festival in a really safe uh, and responsible manner so we came up with a theme for the festival actually based on membership uh, webinars last year because collaboration was a theme that just came up over and over again in terms of what members were talking about that while the pandemic is such a challenge that actually partnerships were being built um, during such a challenging time and groups were coming together at a local level really to ensure that the needs of learners continued to be met um, during the pandemic so for us it's very much about building back better together with hashtag better together and really during the week of the festival we want to send that strong message of hope to Ireland's adult learning sector um, and provide some activities during that time to highlight the fantastic work that's been happening. Um, so, you know, it's very much about educational equality um, and mitigating educational disadvantage during in a time of COVID-19, which has been a key focus um, of last year and continues to be a focus of this year. Um, so I guess we're really encouraging members to look at collaboration as well in terms of um, if they are plan if you are planning to run events on, on the uh, ground. Um, it is an opportunity to engage online. And just to say, we are aware that not everybody can engage um, in an online context. And that's something that we've been definitely been thinking about. And it's something that we'll have to think about in the future and for the rest of the year, because there are certain people, you know, certain groups of people that are not going to be able to engage online. So we're just thinking about different ways and I think groups as well on the ground might have um, suggestions in terms of how you can um, involve everyone you're probably doing that in terms of some of the programs and, and moving to that kind of online context um, and yeah it's about promoting and acknowledging the incredible work of adult learning providers and learners in terms of adapting to those challenges during COVID-19 and from an AIMS perspective that is really what we're focused on. Um, some of the key messages around the festival it's always about highlighting the importance of adult learning, the positive benefits for individuals, families and communities. Um, and that broader purpose of adult learning is definitely a key focus of the festival. It really, some of the other work um, in Aintis is tied into different funding streams and, and we've got the Fet Learner Forum EU project. This, this is so broad in terms of it being, you know, sometimes people are saying, well, what is adult learning? Or if we're giving an interview on the radio, we're saying really that festival is, is everything from basic education all the way up to third level, everything in between day-to-day -day learning. So it, it provides us a brilliant opportunity to really highlight um, how vast adult learning is and, and the diversity in terms of the programs on the ground. And collaboration, like I mentioned. So, you know, it's more important than ever. And that approach has allowed local groups um, to share resources, ideas, and the membership webinar has been a really good example of sharing all of, all of their ideas. and. Um, you know, in terms of how they've been adapting. And ultimately it is to continue to meet the needs of learners on the ground, which we um, appreciate has been a huge challenge. So we have come up with some themes for the festival. And just to say to members, these are a guide. So it's only to try and help shape some of the events, but if you're running an event and it doesn't fit under a theme, that's absolutely perfect. We're not tied into these um, from an Aintis perspective. One of the main reasons that we chose these themes was because they are star award categories and we we all we have a um a really engaged group in with, through the star award nominations so really it's a way of tying the star awards into the broader festival which sometimes is a challenge um because groups are really engaged with the star awards but they don't necessarily know that it takes part it, it takes place as part of the festival so 
We have sustainable development through education, learner voice, health and wellbeing, social inclusion, and third level access and engagement. So if there's an event that you're running that fits into a theme, that's fantastic. But if not, um, again, that's no problem. It is just to help um, guide groups as well. So I guess it's our first ever virtual Adult Learners Festival, and we have talked to lots of stakeholders uh, other festivals throughout Ireland and some of the learning festivals are not taking place in, in 2021 um, but we're a membership organisation and we feel that it's really really important to continue with the festival in this um, virtual space because we feel that our members have just done incredible work and we really want to use that uh, use this week to, to celebrate and acknowledge and promote your work um, so that's really you know why we're doing it we are in level five restrictions. So that does limit our communication activities. So normally we'd have events in a bags, we'd be doing photography around the country and um, we will still be doing videography, but it will be through Zoom. And um, so I guess it's been a challenge for us in terms of looking at um, what we can do, you know, with such high level of restrictions, but we, you know, we're very much, um, I guess, committed to in ensuring that we promote the work of the members during this time. And I'll talk about some of the ways that we're doing that. We have more events than ever during the week of the festival that we're running from Aintus and some of them are collaborative and I'll go through them shortly just to give you an, an, an outline in terms of what we're doing. Um, and in terms of supporting members, we will have a number of 50 euro grants for members. We won't have loads, so it'll be first come first served and I'll share information uh, with members in terms of how we're doing that. I think another key thing that we want to get across today is that we have flexibility on the type of events. So normally groups open the events publicly and um, for the public to come into their centers in an online context we appreciate that it might not be possible to actually open your events publicly because you know it's important that your learners have a safe space um, and it, it it's just more difficult to do that in an online context so even if your event isn't open for everybody, we're still happy to promote it as part of the festival. So I think that's just something to say and um, that's slightly different. Um, and really why would a group want to get involved in the festival? Um, from an Aintis perspective, this is a fantastic opportunity for us to promote your work um, and your commitment to, to adult learning, raise awareness about opportunities in the local area, so while we appreciate things look slightly different now, it is a really good opportunity um, for us to run a national campaign to encourage adults to take the first step back into learning. Um, and through our communications work last year through our channels, which include our social media, website, uh, media reach through press releases, um, we reached over 5.2 million people in 2020 through all of those uh, platforms. So. I guess from a national perspective, we can really highlight the work at a local level. And that's something that we're really, that, that's kind of a key element in terms of the festival. So just some of the key uh, program or some of the key events that we will be running as our program of events. We'll have a democracy event, which is a part of a future lab project. And Beverly might correct me, I think it's the 1st of March we have for that uh, date. We have some FET Learner Forum events, so Kildare and Wicklow ETB on the 2nd and 3rd of March, um, they'll be taking place. So they just happen to fall within the festival, but I think it's another really good opportunity to share learner voice during the week. We're going to be running a mental health and well-being session for learners. So we have a sports psychologist who works with the IRFU and he's going to do a session. And we hope to record that session and, and, and that providers will be able to use that uh, with your learners um, in the future as a future resource and so it's very much focused about around looking after your mental health and your well-being during COVID-19. We're in 2021 we're looking at expanding our membership in Northern Ireland because Aintis is an all-island organisation it's something we're very uh, passionate about so there will be a community education Northern Ireland event on the 3rd of March that will be for Northern Irish groups uh, that want to find out more about Aintis and the work that we do. We've moved the Star Award celebration to the Thursday, which is the 4th of March. Um, and then we're going to have a NALAB Policy Day event um, on the 5th of March. So NALAB is five jurisdictions, um, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England. Um, and we'll be bringing all of those groups together 
um, to talk about um, educational quality, a, a kind of shared vision for educational quality. And I think on that policy day as well, we'll be calling for future funding for community education. So a lot of our members will know that we did work um, around securing funding um, through the MEADF, all the acronyms uh, fund last year. Um, so that policy day event is really important to us. Our colleagues in the research team, as well as um, our advocacy team have been doing fantastic work around um, that survey that I talked about at the start um, and gathering information in terms of how that fund has been used. So we really want to use this opportunity during the week as well to call for future funding because we feel that it's really important and necessary. Um, so we'll be doing some work around that. So there's a couple of other collaborative events that we're planning as well, but all of these events will be ANCAS led. So if you don't have the capacity to run an event during the week, we'll have a number of events that members um, can attend as well, and we'll be sharing information um, on those as well. Um, so hosting your own event, we would really encourage members if, if they're thinking about it um, to run an event. And even when thinking about running an event, think about you're probably already doing this. So this just provides us an opportunity to highlight what you're doing. We don't necessarily want a big piece of extra work that members have to do. Um, but again, you're welcome to run something uh, specifically as part of the festival um, if, if you feel that that's something that you would be interested in doing. So it might be a taster session, or I know people are doing uh, online open days. I know in Kassan, I know Maria's here and they've been doing um, events every Friday. So really it provides you with an opportunity to showcase your organization's work. And just to say, because I had some queries from members during the week, we don't promote specific courses during the week of the festival, but we very much encourage members to promote kind of an information session or information about what programs they offer. Um, because that's that's more from in terms of the perspective that we do. Um, it might be a virtual coffee or tea morning with learners. We've heard members talk about trying to get that informal, um, you know, how important that informal piece of learning on an online context is quite difficult. So maybe it is just inviting your learners to have um, a coffee or tea morning during the festival. Um, my colleague Emma has also put together a communications toolkit, which really looks at that step by step. Um, approach to run an event, but also looks at some of those online promotional pieces that you can use as part of your event. So backdrops and banners and different things like that, and um, that will help you to run your event. You can submit your event on One Step Up and um, on the One Step Up calendar, so that's free of charge. Um, and then I guess one of the benefits of using the One Step Up is that then allows Aintus to share those events on our social media platforms because we have a landing page for them to go back to. Um, but we also appreciate that not everybody wants an open event and wants it to be shared there. So I guess we're flexible to get some feedback on that. Um, so we're going to really focus next week on that step by step guide around the event. But, you know, we do appreciate that members are facing challenges um, on the ground in terms of, of, of the remote kind of working during the pandemic. Um, but I guess we're looking at trying to provide a step by step. Uh, guide about how you might organize uh, a virtual event so just I won't go into great detail on this but it is covered in the uh, communications toolkit and like I said we will be focusing on that next week but deciding on a theme and that sounds more complicated you might decide you're not going to follow any specific theme um, but if you do it might help you in terms of shaping some of those ideas of events they could run a timeline for the event so we would say as soon as you can decide that you are going to run an event that will help in terms of promotion um, and getting um, information out there to your stakeholders. You know, pre uh, presenters and resources. And we'd say in an online context, keep it really short and simple in terms of what kind of event you want to run, um, how you're going to manage registration. So we use Eventbrite at the moment in terms of our registration, but for some groups, they might have a name and an email and that's absolutely perfect as well. So there's loads of different ways that you can do it. And then the promotion of the event. So Aintus is really, you know, we really want to help members promote the event. Um, but it is really important that, that you yourself are promoting your own event to your groups because you're going to know, um, you know who your stakeholders are, who your target audience is. Um, and just some ideas for events, you know, open days information sessions are always really popular. Um, a demonstration, a taster course. I know um, Ability at Work in Cork are a fantastic group and they're doing online cookery sessions. So like there's lots of different fun activities that people can do to engage uh, with their learners. 
talent shows, step challenges. Obviously, there's um, you know health and well-being day, so stress reduction workshops, um, you know online yoga. There's lots of different um, sessions that people are already doing that we've heard of. You know, a quiz. I think having something fun for your learners during that week. Um, you know, just to offer something a little bit different. Um, you know, and we can cover these next week in terms of, of how people uh, would do that. There's Facebook Live events, so lots of different ideas. And I think next week we'd really look at exploring some of those and how they would actually work. Um, so just to give you a bit of an update in terms of our promotion activities and how we're spreading the message about uh, the festival. So we've been doing lots of networking meetings with different uh, national stakeholders. Um, we have sponsors as part of the STAR Awards, so we've been linking in with them about sharing information. We have a fantastic board as part of AINTAS, so we've done presentations of sharing information. So really it's about linking in with as many groups as possible and um, sharing the information of the festival. I also met with the National um, Learning Festival coordinators as well because there's other festivals that take place around the country. And so it's just kind of creating that link in terms of shared information. We have a dedicated uh, festival newsletter that we're sending out uh, weekly to a range of stakeholders. Uh, we're do doing lots of media uh, press releases. So lots of local press releases around the shortlisted Star Award groups. We'll be doing that around the winners, um, the Adult Learners Festival launch, which will be the week before the festival. I think it's the 22nd of Feb, uh, policy day as well. Um, and then this year, we normally do advertising around the radio, but we're not going to be doing that this year because we just feel that we'd be better um, placed to use our resources around the online campaign. Uh, social media will play a big part of it um, as always, but I think more so than ever during this time of COVID-19. Um, and then we will have Star Wars videos um, through Zoom, which we're recording at the moment. And then we've got some fantastic learner stories. So learner stories are a key part in sharing that voice through the festival as well. So I'm just going to hand over to my colleague, Emma, not to put you on the spot. If you want to just do a quick run through of the social media um, and then we'll go into the breakout rooms and, and we can have a discussion with members in terms of um, some feedback there. So thanks very much. Thanks, Judy. Um, I'll be just a few minutes. Um, and if you just, I suppose, click through the slides <laughs> as, I, as I meander through. Um, yeah, so we've got lots of content that we're developing uh, at the moment as well, um, that we'll be sharing over the next few weeks in the run up to the festival and then during the festival week. Um, so that includes uh, video content, um, such as the, the launch video that Katie mentioned there, um, which will be coming soon. And then there's the videos uh, from the Star Awards nominees as well. Um, and yeah, at the moment I'm highlighting sponsors and uh, of course the promotion of global events as well. But I think if you click on to the next slide, Katie, um, it should be, I, I want to cover two things mainly basically. Um, yeah, uh, so this slide and Katie's already gone through it, but uh, this is our first virtual festival. And so engaging online on social media is super, super, super important. Um, so there's quite a lot of text on this slide, but the main things to remember are tagging Aintis. <laughs> uh, if you tag us on Twitter, on our new Instagram page as well, I'll actually link you to the Instagram page uh, in case you don't know um, about it. It's, it's brand new. Um, uh, the main things are, yeah, tagging us, um, whatever social media profile you're using, and using that hashtag better together. And I know that it, it's, it's, easy, it's easy to say that, to just, you know, include these hashtags in social media posts, but it you know, what social media posts are you putting out there? So there's kind of two main ways that I want to go through um, that are there are just ways for you to get involved in the in the festival uh, beyond, you know, organizing events. Um, and these might be ways that you find easier. These might be ways that, you know, you just you find kind of uh, maybe even blend into to work that uh, you're doing at the moment as well. Um, and I am happy to, to answer any questions um, on it. So if you click on to the next slide, Katie. Yeah. So the social media photo challenge is, uh, I think, going to be really, really fun. I've just been roping the whole staff into supporting us on this as well. So basically, the idea is to uh, just send out really, really positive messages about adult learning out there. That's what the festival's about. It's about promoting um, the positive impacts of adult learning. Um, and, you know, I, I get to bring things constantly back to COVID-19, but it's inevitable at this stage. And what the social media photo challenge is, 
it's an opportunity for us uh, and that's that's everyone here uh, that's uh, the learners in your in your organizations um, and ev everyone really anyone following us on social media we're really really encouraging to take part in this and the idea is that you take a picture that represents something that you've been learning uh, during COVID-19 so embarrassingly, this is a picture of my keyboard, which is right behind me here. It's always behind me in every meeting I'm in. Uh, but I've been learning, I've been going back to learning the keyboard, uh, the piano a lot while, uh, while we've been in, in the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and that's the page open at Rocketman. I've been learning a lot of Elton John very, very badly, but I've been loving it. Um, what it's been doing for me is it's been giving me an opportunity to kind of structure my work day around, around you know, the nine to five and helping to get that balance between, you know, sitting at my, my office space and then putting that away and, you know, kind of just balancing my, my life and work priorities that way. So that's what I would do. I would take a picture of the keyboard and I will do this. I will post it on my social media and I'll explain how this learning has been incredibly positive for me. Um, and I'll tag you into this and use that hashtag there together. So we're asking for you all to please do that as well if you can. I've heard some of the members of staff as well describe, you know, like uh, they've been practicing guitar. It's not all just music, though. Um, but they've been doing things like that. They've been, uh, been completing part-time courses as well on the side or like baking and cooking and all of that, really. Like it's, it's so individual and so different to everyone, but it, it doesn't have to be uh, vocational learning. You know, it, it really it can be anything. Um, so yeah, that's something we really, really encourage you to get involved with in the next the next few weeks on the week of the festival. And then this slide is just on the launch video, which we're in the process of putting together at the moment. Uh, we've had fantastic contributions from a few learners already. Um, the video will be quite short, but the aim of it is to launch the festival and to demonstrate the benefits of adult learning and, and encourage uh, everyone to get involved in the festival activities. So that'll be coming up. Um, and one more thing, Katie, before the breakout, <laughs> breakout sessions, because I keep forgetting to put this in a slide. Uh, and it is, it's maybe, it's maybe a more complex one. So if you have any, if you're curious about it at all, get in touch with me. I'll pop my email into the, the chat box. But uh, basically we're offering, uh, it's a members only uh, opportunity to get involved with a social media takeover. So basically members would have the opportunity to take over Intis's Twitter profile, for instance. And it doesn't need to be the week of the, the festival uh, but uh, in brief it would be a chance for you to kind of you know use our social media following um, use that that platform to um, to draw attention to the work that you do and to uh, like it can be done in a lot of different ways but just one idea of how this would go and you know we would we would link together and you know develop the content for this together and everything um, the idea wouldn't be to, to create an awful lot of work for you it would be uh, I would be supporting you to, to develop this content so that it would uh, convey your messages um, and uh, would be appropriate then for, for our Twitter profile. But for example, you could do it uh, in the style of like a day in the life of, of, <laughs> of any of these of Um, It can be it can be that simple, you know, it can be uh, what a day uh, for an Ankasan learner looks like or what a day for where the Ankasan team looks like. Um, and the, the key thing there is just getting out the, the message about the, the vital work that you're doing. Um, so that's that's one idea. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has on that. And that's me, Katie. That's great, Emma. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, really we want to, uh, I guess that was a, a, a whistle stop for in terms of the festival and what we're doing, but there's lots of I guess other activities taking place um, as part of the festival and lots of communications, uh, social media, planning, promotion. Emma's given some really good um, kind of tips there in terms of how to engage in an online context. And we appreciate that probably members will have a lot of questions around the festival um, because, it, it, because we're conscious that it is so different this year in terms of an online context. So the breakout sessions are your opportunity, um, you know, really to give feedback as well in terms of, um, additional support that you might need uh, to partake in the festival and um, any other ideas that you have. It's really about how we can support you as an organization, um, how we can promote your work. Um, questions and answers, any questions you have, and um, we'll be happy to answer as well. And like I said, suggestions for content next week. This is very much kind of an information session, an overview. Next week, we really want to hone down into that, that online event um, piece and how we can support members 
um, in providing information to you and some kind of tips in terms of how to run an event. We know that lots of groups are already, you know, pros at running that online event piece, but um, again, it's a great opportunity to get ideas from other members in terms of what they're doing as well. So we might go into breakout sessions maybe for 15 minutes, uh, 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll come back into uh, the overall sessions just to give um, just to give some feedback and then it would help in terms of sharing some of those questions that have come up in the different groups. So again, this is your opportunity for members um, and you know for the people taking part to just ask questions, give feedback. We're really open um, to, to any suggestions or anything that you have and just using this as your space um, to, to discuss and get ideas from each other. Do I need to stop sharing? Yeah, possibly. Okay, so I'll go on ahead now and send the invitations to the breakout rooms. Yeah. Super. Thanks, Millie and Emma. We'll be zoomed zoomed out shortly. So if you just accept your um I'll be getting the invitation now, but do let me know if not. My connection is showing that I'm a, a bit low there. Um, yeah, I'll, I might just give a little bit of feedback from our group and then go around to uh, different uh, staff members who are facilitating as well, just to share some information or some of the points that were coming up. Um, so I think everyone in the group, I, I was with uh, Maria and Imelda from Uncasan and Anne was there from the Ability Programme, they've been shortlisted for a Star Award. And then we have Michael uh, O'Mahony there as well, who's an individual member of Angels. So, just some really good ideas. Um, Uncle Son have their events kind of planned and I know they always take part um, in the festival. So there's a couple of different events. Uh, I know Marie was talking about an information uh, online session that they're actually doing every Friday anyway. So that, that fits in. And then Imelda looks after the U3A group. So they're looking at a presentation, um, an external presentation with their learners as well. So just some questions that came up that I thought were quite interesting. You know, questions about the purpose of, of the event. Is it for broader uh, stakeholders? So promoting it, you know, broader than say your learners or is it just for your learners? And I think for members or, or for groups to just think about what you would like, don't kind of go out of your way to do something totally different. I think in an online context during an event, it is quite daunting that you're kind of worried that maybe no one will show up. And um, if you have a group of learners that you're already engaging with in an online context, it's an opportunity to do something fun with them. So I know Anne was talking about her learners are kind of a younger age group. So how does she encourage them to take part in an online event? So next week, we might look at some of those fun ice breaking activities, quizzes, um, you know, to kind of entice people to engage online if it is something separate to what they're already doing. And um, it was great, I guess ideas around local promotion and promoting in local newspapers. So Angels, we might look at some local draft press releases that we could send out to groups as well to, to help you to promote uh, your event at a local level. Um, but I think overall some really good suggestions and it is about kind of hearing from other members about different ideas. Um, and I think next week will give us a brilliant opportunity to look at shaping an event um, but to think about who your stakeholder group is. And it can just be a group of learners that you're already working with but also think about the opportunity to collaborate with other organizations at a local level, because it's a brilliant opportunity to even share. Some groups are looking at sharing information, uh, information sessions with other organizations just to share that work. Um, so I might just pop over. Derville, did you want to give some feedback? Hey, Katie. Yeah. Um, it was fantastic. Nearly everybody in the group pretty much is running an event. So that's really exciting. Um, in terms of the questions, interesting one. Will groups need insurance to deliver um, events online? So I said, obviously, I couldn't answer that one. It's something to look into. Um, and then also uh, groups asked, could we share the GDPR um, notice that we share as well? So that's, of course, something we can send out. Um, and I don't know if you want an update on the types of activities or maybe we probably don't have time, but they're the two questions anyway. Very durable. I think that's really interesting. The insurance, I haven't come across that, but I think we'll have to look into it because I, don't, I also don't know the answer to that. But I think maybe after what would be useful is if, if from Ainta staff, we gather some of the ideas around events, we could actually look at giving an input 
either after in the follow-up email to all the participants today just to share that information with you all just to get ideas and um, from other breakout groups and then also next week we'll be able to implement them into that event planning piece um john did you want to give some feedback if there's any questions or any any points that came up yeah like um the, the, one of the questions that came up katie was about uh, kind of internet security and security online and one of the groups is holding an event which will kind of encompass kind of parents working at home with their children. So they just know, want to know in kind of terms of that, is that an okay event to kind of, to run? I, I wasn't sure offhand. And I suppose the other thing as well was like, would we kind of recommend ticketed events or just kind of registering in advance for, for events? And there were kind of the two, two of the main questions. So there was other questions raised, but I'll, I said to Emma, I'll feed them into you guys later, so. Thanks a million, Don. Yeah, I think the security piece we can definitely have a look at in terms of what platform, because it, it, it'll be dependent on what platforms people are using. And um, so I definitely think that we can come back to that. And in terms of ticketed events, I think it depends on what group. Like we've had a lot of questions from members over the last couple of weeks about opening their event up um, and, and kind of looking at that registration piece. So I think potentially next week when we're looking at events, we can talk about that. I think if you're opening it up, um, it's just a matter of knowing who your target audience, where are you promoting it? If it is something like you're talking with the parents and children, that's obviously going to be a closed event that you're going to really want to monitor your registration in terms of who's actually attending um, and potentially look at some of those security issues that might come up within that event. So it depends if you're keeping it closed. And just to say, in terms of Aintas promoting the events, we're not suggesting that we promote Zoom links or anything like that on the One Step Up. It would actually be, for more information about this event, please contact, say, Imelda on Kassan because we're not going to be opening that up on a broader level. We don't feel that it's appropriate in terms of, of a virtual festival. So that then allows people to contact you directly about your event, um, which will prevent that being out. And even for our membership webinars, we don't go putting Zooms. You know, we wait, we, we, we can keep an eye on the registration list. Um, you know, we, we actually would go through it to see, are they members, are they stakeholders, groups that we've been in contact with? Um, and that's how we kind of monitor um, the registration in terms of events and making sure that the, the space kind of remains safe, which I think is, is a really important question um, that has been coming up. Suzanne, did you want to give some feedback from your group? Yeah, we've, we've a couple of people running events, all right. And um, yeah, I think mainly sticking with their kind of people that they're already engaging with. Um, but one of the questions was just actually, it was about the grant and how to apply for that, or the grants, the small grants. Super. So just in terms of the grants, that'll be for members. So I'll be sending information around and it will be kind of a first come first serve. So we'll be sending information later in the week around the grants and I'll be, I'll be in touch with everybody around that. And um, so I think that is a really useful question to have. And just to say, if anybody thinks of anything after, please email us. Uh, we're happy to answer questions or give people a phone call as well if they want to kind of chat more. Mm. Um, Eve, do you want to give some feedback? I'm conscious we, we're almost out of time. Yeah. I'll try and be quick. Um, so yeah, we had a really good conversation um, around some of the events that are in, in place or being planned currently. And yeah, most of the people in my group were um, planning events and most of those were kind of taster events. And um, there was interest as well in the Intus Twitter takeover. And um, I suppose the ways in which that could give access to new audiences for members. So there was excitement around that. Um, there was um, questions, I suppose, that we could address next week around um, tools and resources for members, particularly um, around like shaking up the online space so that it's not so static. Um, members were interested in, um, you know, quizzes, tips around quizzes and bingo and how to kind of um, make that space a little bit more dynamic and engaging for people participating um, in online events. So yeah, and there was also interest in in conversations with um, other members of other jurisdictions. So in the NALAB events and in the Northern Ireland um, event piece as well. That's fantastic, Eve. Thank you so much. And I think we will be really looking at making sure that we have a really interactive uh, webinar next week around the events. And if anybody can't make it next week, we are going to be recording so that we can share those sessions with people. Because I know there was a lot of people who couldn't make it today either. Um, and I think absolutely, it's come up even in membership webinars last year around that online learning space and how to create that sense of fun, something informal, and a space for people to connect in an online context. So. We'll address some of those questions around the security online. I think we'll look next week at that event, who your target group is and, and what different platforms that you could potentially use and then security issues to kind of think about in terms of, of, of those events. 
because uh, it is tricky in an online context even um making sure that the safe the space is really safe um and that you know people you know because it'll obviously depend on what kind of event you have um but as always we, we just want to thank members i know we've kind of run out of time there but we will share uh, some of the points and uh feedback from the breakout groups i think would be really uh, interesting to share that um sorry i'm just looking at some of the comments there from beard uh, any contacts with wales uh falls on saint david's day so well wales are taking part in the nalab event uh deirdre uh david from the uh learning at work institute in wales so i'm not sure what day <laughs> saint david's is on but it's really interesting to see where it falls into and i think one thing about the festival opening it up in an online context means that we also have a ferrari uh, 100 event on the tuesday which is celebrating celebrating 100 years of paulo ferrari so um, we're able to have collaborative events across Europe as well and engage with other groups. Um, so really, really good. Um, but just thank you so much for all your feedback. And next week, we'll really look at taking on board all your comments. Uh, we'll share information and please do reach out. Um, perfect, Deirdre. I'll, I'll definitely get in touch with you um, on that. Absolutely share contacts <clears throat> for you. So just thank you so much to all our members. We hope you have a fantastic week. And um, we'd really encourage you to, to take part in the festival in whatever way you can and um, share information, feedback with us. And we will be in touch uh, following the webinar with some uh, useful resources. And then we'll look at planning the uh, webinar next week. Um, so I will, what we might do after this actually is share all of the different events with links to registration um, uh, that Aintus are running um, so that you have information on that as well. So just to say a final thank you again.